Building a business empire all starts with a dream. That is the power of entrepreneurship. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this edition of Managing Africa with me, Nizin Mebune. Somewhere in the far north region of Cameroon, precisely in the Logone Shari Division, we found the ASAP Themer Cooker. It is a non-electric device having a cylindrical shape made from a fabric and several thermal insulators. A product that came into existence because of the scarcity of cooking fuel, like wood, charcoal and gas in the far north region of Cameroon. The ASAP thermal cooker allows you steamer good meals of all kinds. To use the ASAP thermal cooker, a pot is first preheated normally on a fireplace in order to provide an initial cooking temperature. At this point, the pot is removed from the heat and placed in a cooker where, due to the insulation, it remains close to the temperature at which it was removed from the heat for a period of time. The cooker has the ability to retain heat in that enclosure. The ASAP thermal cooker can be allowed to cook without frequent checks. It is also faster and allows you to go about your daily activities. It is easily transportable, doesn't burn, and has aesthetic value. The cooker does not cause pollution during its use because it is exclusively thermal energy and its insulation is bioproduced locally. In addition, it is quite affordable, both in terms of price and difficulty. The ASAP Thermal Cooker is the initiative of a 27-year-old engineer whom, out of curiosity, discovered the idea which is today not only serving the society but has become an enterprise with a vision to expand. Now, what is the way forward? Joining us on Managing Africa today is Aisata Ibami, she is a young engineer who is into renewable energy, and she is the CEO and founder of ASAP Africa Sal. She created the ASAP Thermal Coca, which we are going to be discovering the journey and the story of it all in the course of the program. Hello, Aisata Ibami, and welcome on the program. Hello, Najin. Thank you very much. You're welcome. On this program today, we also have on board Mr. Tantoko Fangs Ajebe who is a microfinance expert and the head of operations for Credit Africa Invest. He is our potential investor on managing Africa. Hello, Mr. Antoko. Hello, Nadia. Thank you for receiving me here today. So today we're going to be finding out the journey of ASAP Thermal Coca. Do you want to tell us what was your motivation? What led you into creating the ASAP Thermal Coca? Okay, um, thank you. First of all, I'm very curious. So in 2016, when I went to the Far North to continue my university studies, once I, I was there, I noticed uh, the lack of, uh, of cooking fuel. And uh, when I went again to Yaoundé to, to, to do my, my academic internship, I met a friend. Uh, during uh, just one day, I met a friend who is, we have the same, uh, I can say, uh, we have the same uh, um, ambitions, you know, in, 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 energy in, Af in energy in Africa. And one day he told me, do you know that we can cook with polystyrene? I said, what? With polystyrene, you can cook? He said, yes, he told me, yes, we can cook with it. I said, how? He told me, I don't really know, but just go and check it. That's why the same day when I went to my, uh, the way, the place where, where I was doing internship, I went there and I was just, I went to, into Google. I started looking, uh, is it really, is it? Yes, because I was very curious, how is it possible? So uh, I went back to, to, to the far north, especially in Marwa. I started thinking, and uh, fortunately for me, I have an aunt who is, uh, she's very curious, just like me. And I told her, I, I just explained the situation to her. She told me, let us try it. Let us see whether it is possible or not. So I said, okay, maybe uh, because we have our market there where we can find it anywhere, you know. I went and started looking at it. I saw it, and I was asking to people, can I have it? He told me, what are you going to do with it? I just 
said, just give it to me. Mm -hmm. And some uh, other people was, was just selling it to me, just give me 400, give me 500, no problem, just give it to me. Then I go back with it, I just start to, uh, to reach it. Yes, just it would be like uh, like rice like this. Yes, and I said I did it with cartoon. My first experience was with cartoon. I did it so I just put uh, the polystyrene into just around and I've closed it. Then the I remember it was the I think in January. January yes, I did my first test in January. So after finishing doing it, January I just, 2020, 2021? No, 2017. 2017. Yes, yeah, so one year uh, after. So I've just put my rice into the pot. I've, uh, in fact, I was just testing. I was, do I was just doing if it, if it is good or not. So I did it in the morning before going to school. I've put the rice on fire, uh, I think for, I've put for two minutes. Two minutes. I put in then without opening. I put in the car, into the carton and I went to school. So I was. I came back at twelve that day. I remember. I, I came back and I opened it. It's just like I was very um, afraid that it is not okay. I will just my. I will, I will lose. In fact, I will lose. I will lose my idea and I will be. I will be very uh, this perturbated. So I've opened it and it was okay. It was okay, so I've just snapped it. Uh, I've caught my aunt. So come and see it. She says it's not fair, it's not good, it's not true. Maybe you have you have done it in, 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 into the gas before coming in, coming here. But me, I was I was in confidence with me. So I started uh, explaining to my teachers. They said no, it's very toxic. Polystyrene is not good for our health, and uh, it's not even good to see. It's not uh, aesthetic. You must change it. So I just, I started to work on it. Yes, yes, to, yes, to make it beautiful. And for, for me, it's just because I was, I'm an engineer, it's a way, it was a way for me to help my community because here in front of, if someone knows there, it is very desert. So we really lack fuel, uh, cooking fuel, just like gas and gas, not every, everybody can have it because if you if once you have money you can have it but if not you can't and uh, firewood is not really easy even charcoal the same so it was my it is my contribution to to, to the farm and that's how tema the asap tema coca yes this yes this is the beginning of uh, the project so where do you see this project in years to come what is the vision for it what do you plan on doing okay uh since this project, it was just like uh, our, it was, it was a passion for me at the beginning. I was not dreaming about it that that people can love it, people can commend it abroad, because we have uh, we have our client abroad, such as Belgium, France, and even in Germany. So I, what I can say is that. I see ASAP Africa like a benchmark of a household appliance for years. In maybe five years, I see it like this. So when someone just speak about uh, a cooker, just refer to ASAP thermal cooker or ASAP Africa SAP because it's not our one, it's not the only, the only one project we have. We have many other projects. So you already mentioned the value and how ASAP Africa, ASAP uh, Temakoka can actually contribute to society. But I would like you to mention that again. What okay, is the yes, contribution of ASAP Temakoka to the society? Okay, I can call it uh, like goals, you know. So uh, the first goals for, of ASAP Africa, you know, is to give the, the possibility of, to women to be more free. Because we know here in Africa when for, for a woman to, to be entrepreneur, it's not really easy because she must take care of the family, she must take care of her careers or business, then she must take care of, uh, I don't know, maybe the society, the whole, the, the whole family, her woman, her man family and her own family. So it's not really easy. When you want to cook, you can enter and make uh, maybe five hours because you want to cook. And when are you going to work? We don't know. And nowadays, a, the, a woman, she's the main uh, she the main object of the economy of African economy. You know it when you go there. Who is running this uh, enterprise? A woman. When you go, maybe in another, in another uh, country, African country, women are are really developed. So it is a possibility to give a more free time to women. Yes, to take care of their their business, to take care of the family, because some women don't uh, uh, don't allow uh, the household, the housewife, uh, please, the housewife to cook for their for their men. 
the damage that we shouldn't see. And the secondly, uh, it helps us to fight against uh, climate change. We know it nowadays is a common question for us, climate change, and it's, it's very serious. We must, all of us, we must, uh, very, uh, we must be concentrated and to, to act toward this question. So it is a way for, for us to fight against uh, climate how change. Does because, it, how does it? Because, for example, uh, we often go and, f and, uh, and look for firewood yes. because some families on China, they, 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 they use firewood. Yes. So we, some people, they just work for kilometers mm -hmm. to go and look for it. Mm -hmm. Even some, in some place, there, there is no even uh, trees. Because why? Because the, 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 the excessive cutting of trees. Okay. To cook for it, to make charcoal, to cook, to other things. So we must reduce it. For instance, uh, the practical use of asa. If I want to cook my, my red beans, mm -hmm. on gas, red beans take uh, maybe three hours or four hours. Mm -hmm. This, the, I'm just estimated, but yes. really it's two hours. Yes. But with asa, you must use just uh, 15 minutes of your gas. 15 minutes, or even for your firewood, you just use 15 minutes. If you were using one kilogram of firewood to cook your red beans, with asap, you will use the, the third, you just divide it into third, yes, and you take one part, you cook with it for about 15 minutes. Then you take up without opening, you put in your asap thermal cooker. It will be ready after five hours. But during the cooking, you can go to work, you can go to school, you can go everywhere you want. Yes. You can go even for 10 hours. When you come without back, checking. Without, without checking, without opening, uh -huh. because you don't stress. There is no fire into a sap. You can just put it in your chair like this, in, in the, where you are seated, where you are seated, and everywhere you can just put it. So there is no problem. This is the advantage. So you, just, you can use your firewood, but not as you, are, you were using before. Yes, that's the advantage. I must say this is a, it's a revolutionary idea and it's a very great initiative. Now, I want to find out from you, what are some of the challenges you faced in the process of um, creating the ASAP Thermacoca? Challenges we really have uh, because um, the main one is, the, is convincing women of the effectiveness of ASAP. Because when you, when you often explain to people, they say it's not possible. There's no fire inside. <laughs> there's no charcoal, there's no gas, there's nothing. How can you tell me that it is, it is able to cook something? How can you explain to me? So now we, I think we made something like one year to explain to, to people around me, firstly my family, to convince them how to use that asap is true. When you use it, you are, you are okay. Then we, in 2019, I also went to Morocco we went there to, it was a challenge, competition, uh, competition of projects. So we, as a thermal cooker was, uh, was a laureate. So we went there. And uh, when I tried to explain, people were first very skeptic. They said, no, it's not true. Just demonstrate us. Demonstrate how it can cook. It can cook uh, maybe rice or red beans, such things. So people are very skeptic. So the main, the main challenge is to convince people. people. And the second one is uh, the materials. So we, I can say uh, we don't really have it as we want because it's not really easy. But uh, fortunately for us, uh, last month, I, I, I met the director of uh, the director of Sorokoton who gave us, I can say it's not uh, official, but maybe very soon it will be official for us so that we must have cotton as we want, in fact. Okay, so to have those materials, you definitely need to have the budget, the finance to assess them. And I want to believe that so far you have plans to expand. Yeah. Yes, so definitely. So is that okay? Is that already figured out or you have such challenges? I can say that on paper, we have done everything, but now we have to be engaged. We have to manifest what we wrote on the papers, mm -hmm. you see? So our main problem now is, as you said, is a budget, money. Because we don't have it, we don't really have it. And uh, we, mo we want to satisfy our, our client. Because if today, um, I don't know how to explain it, but if a client call me, oh, I, I explained to my sister she needed it, but she's in Paris, can you send it to her? And with the issue, it's not really easy. If I meet someone who is going abroad, I say, please, can you 
go with this uh, with this item here then in Paris maybe I'll give you something such things or she if she if the person has somebody who's coming please call this person and give my my item to the person so that he must come with it so this is how we, we are doing but we really need money to to manage to to yes to accomplish our project we will turn over to Mr. Ntoko. Mr. Ntoko, you have listened to Aisata. You have seen her vision. You've understood the, the project. What can you, what, what do you need as an investor to make such a vision come to reality? I think uh, the most important is to be able to see her vision. Yes. And uh, from the way she's spoken already, you see that she has the vision, she has the drive, she has the passion on what she's doing. Um, I think also is the experience. So uh, most of the times investors look at your passion first, where you want to lead your company to, as well as the availability of the market. Yes, I think those are the key issues. Okay. So generally speaking, what is an investor looking for? in a startup, generally? Well, like I said, the um, first thing is the passion mm -hmm. of the entrepreneur or the founder, mm -hmm. where they drive, where are they going with, with the company. Secondly is the market, because there will be no reason for an investor, an investor to put money, into to put something money that somewhere cannot... where there's no market, because it's the market that leads the business to whichever direction it's going to. Um, thirdly, we look at the cost of the project. If investors want to see if I invest in this project, I am sure that maybe in five years, I'll be able to have my returns, or two or three. So you, we look at those things. We look at the business plan. It's also very important, as well as your team. You need to have a team, a strong team, who have the experience to drive this same passion that you have to whichever level that you're thinking of going to. And looking at another side of it, what are some of the reasons why an investor would not want to invest in a project like this, even if it looks, it seems promising? If the entrepreneur or the founder does not know, have not done the feasibility studies of the market to know where this, my innovation is going to, we won't do that. Mm -hmm. And the cost of the project, sometimes, you know, a small uh, projection might look like a $1 million mm -hmm. projection. So you need to know where you're going to have the drafts in place. Your business plan will speak for itself. And then we'll say, OK, we, we are leading with you. If not, we can invest when you yourself don't have the drive. You will not be able to drive your team. So I think those are key points. Okay, Mr. Ntoko, so what can you tell the many Africans out there as an investor who have amazing business ideas, solution-based businesses or ideas, and they are still, you know, wondering if they should, the, they are not inspired enough to take up on them. What, what do you have to say to them? Africa is still a virgin land. A lot of innovative ideas out there, and there's a market. Um, about 45% of African population are below 29. So there's a market for ideas that are coming. If you see, uh, a lot of them are driving, are coming up every day. People are innovating in the finance sector, the insurance, biodegradable. Uh, biogas and everything and what is killing us is we don't know how to drive those things we don't know where to start from so it's important that when i have a vision like madame said she had a vision and she met some other person and the two of them came together and said okay let's do this so together, they did what we are doing now, and it's innovative. So Africans should start in that same light. If you have an idea, you start from there. When you are in a startup, 
the necessary funding will come. Because the cry is always, where, where would I have money to drive this, to go to, to have a vision of taking my business to the next level? So start. When you start, people will come in. Banks will come in. Investors will come in. Angel investors, there are a lot of them out there willing to pump money into African startups. So I think the first step is to start. Great. So you heard it from our potential investor on the program. And he's advising that if you have a project, just start. It doesn't matter what is happening to you. Take the first step. That's very important. And don't be afraid to make that step. Now, turning to you, Aisata, you have the project. Do you have any questions you would like to ask to the potential investor we have on the program today? OK, um, as a question, I think um, what he said, he explained uh, many things that I understood that is, is, is true, is really true. But I will, what I would like to know is, uh, as an investor, if we need your, maybe your presence in, our, in my startup, if I, for example, for instance, if I come towards you and I just give you my business plan and you have the money that I'm needed, you will give me without working or maybe if you give me your money, you will still have one eyes in the, in the, in the startup. Because some others, I don't know, but some startups are saying that when you go towards an investor, when he gives you the money, is just he doesn't want to know what you're doing, but he just needs a result. It's not maybe if you want a contact, you'll not give a contact, just want you to manage. And then after you give you give him the, 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 the activity that you did and the result at the end. So I would like to know. I think uh, investing in a business is just like you also, you developing your products and you're selling to make a profit. Mm -hmm. So most of the time, investors want to know that where they've invested in, it's on solid soil, solid grounds. Mm -hmm. So um, sometimes it depends on the level of or the risks involved in this investment. Mm -hmm. um, we might want to sit in the board of your company to make key decisions with you, to accompany you. Sometimes uh, it might just be a debt financing. Mm -hmm. We give you a loan and we see to it that you, you pay back maybe in a few years. Yeah. I think those are the kind of things. So it depends on the risk entail in the project and how much we are investing. So with that, uh, other things will come into play. Maybe we look at your team to see that your team is competent enough to drive. OK, we say, OK, we let go for you to, to drive. It's your vision. You can power your vision when yeah. you are not there. But then, like I said, the risks involved as well as the amount of money that's at stake. So okay. basically, that's, that, that's, that's it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So Aisata, I would like to find out from you, what is your advice to people who want to be like you? What is your advice to aspiring entrepreneurs? OK, the first ad advice I can say is, uh, no matter who you are, when you start a business, you must be in confidence with you. No matter, yes, you must be confident. So, uh, because nowadays, as he said, people are just coming in uh, because uh, Africa is a vision market. People are coming. Even uh, people, just for us people, they are coming to invest in Cameroon. Even Cameroonian, they went there maybe for after 10 years, they, they understand that here. They Cameroon, need to come back home yes, and, invest to, invest. and make investments. Yes, so exactly. They are coming back. It, it doesn't mean that they don't have money or they're suffering. They know because they trust in Cameroon, we still have market here. So this is the advice I'm going to give. Thank you very much for joining us on the program today. Thank and you. Thank you. To you, Mr. Antoko. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for the input. Now we're looking forward to what is going to come out of this conversation of behind the scenes. And to you, televiewers, thank you very much. We've come to the end of this edition of Managing Africa. But we have subsequent editions coming up for you, and you want to find out who our next guest is going to be. Continue watching us, and you will not regret spending your time with us. Have a lovely day, and see you on the next edition.